Hello, this is Bob Golding. I'm a uh, senior escalation engineer at the Charlotte off Charlotte site at Microsoft, <coughs> and this is the uh, third and uh, third uh, or fourth, including the uh, the introduction um, series on MPIO. Today we're going to pick up where we left off and uh, I/O handling. As you can see in the slide, we have the I.O. manager and the disk uh, being LUN0 in our DSM. So the first step in handling an I.O., the MPIO, is that a read-write RP is received by the pseudo LUN. Okay, remember the pseudo LUN lives, uh, is, uh, is uh, the disk device which uh, normally in a non-MPIO configured system, the, uh, the SCSI port um, the, our, sorry, the store port uh, or mini port control disks will be, would be um, the, the I/O request would be sent to it. Um, where, would, where they get where the IRP and SRB or storage request block or schedule request block would be sent. Now, to, now this is now the uh, MPIO uh, pseudolun replaces this, and the MPIO pseudolun. Uh, along with the DSM controls uh, all the paths going to the same LUN. Now the read-write uh, IRP is received by the pseudo LUN and this is and uh, pseudo LUN PDO and is passed to uh, the DSM LB get path callback which is which enforces the load balancing policy. The DSM returns the path ID based on a load balancing policy it wishes for the I/O to be sent. The DSM is giving a ch is given a chance to set the uh, a completion routine. The set completion uh, callback is in the DSM is called by MPIO. <clears throat> the DSM re will return the address and context for the completion. The IRP is submitted to the correct real LUN and is sent to the PDO with a port driver that's controlled by store port. And you can see that you have the part manager, uh, MPDEV, and LUN0. MPDEV is actually uh, the MPDEV portion of the class driver, which uh, shows up on the dev stack as uh, dist.sys. When the request completes, the pseudo -less PDO completion routine is called, and the PDO will then call, the PDO, uh, an MPIO will call the DSM's completion routine, and the request is completed. Next, we're going to talk about DSM registration. When the uh, all DSMs have to register themselves with MPIO so they can be called when a new device that's supported by MPIO <coughs> uh, arrives. So when the, D when the DSM's driver entry routine is called during uh, initialization, the, it must allocate a DSM in the data structure with the DSM entry points or callbacks. It's CSM context, initialized WMI structure, and its driver object. The DSM sends this information to MPIO with an IOOCTAL MPDSM register and passes along the DSM and the data structure to register itself with MPIO. MPIO will add the DSM to its internal list of DSMs and it passes back a pointer to a DSM context structure um, that uh, represents this DSM. This is, makes it easier for MPIO to identify the DSM. Now, once the DSM is registered, when the device arrives, the DSM will get called. And during the device arrival phase, when a new device arrives, uh, uh, the device arrival uh, for uh, our, for the MS DSM, the DSM will get the standard inquiry Data and compare it with the supported device list. It will create a device serial number based on this information and create a partially populated device info with, with device uh, with device descriptor, SCSI address saved off the ser saved off uh, serial number, uh, the allure inf allure port and FDO etc. It'll create a device name 
If a lure is supported, it will go over, do a report target group. It will find a group, build one if it doesn't exist. If it's a new group, it will build the target, target port groups and target port info. I'll still just update it. Both implicit and explicit transitions are supported will disable implicit. Explicit MPA, uh, RDSM controls the state of the uh, of the path being standby or whatever uh, standby uh, unavailable active optimized but implicit uh, report target group is sent and the uh, information is uh, returned based on what the device server uh, the, what the device server says um, we'll get a list of controller objects uh, and uh, device 83 data for each uh, the uh, vendor product data, it'll match the IDs, which is the target port information that was returned in a uh, report target group. If no uh, port, uh, port group exists, identifier uses a SCSI address for matching, and it'll create, it'll create the control list and put the device on its internal control list and return the device info as a DSM ID back to MPIO. Now, the MP, MPDEV uh, is the multi-port uh, driver that exists in the class driver. The class driver uh, actually performs two functions. It uh, does the it uh, performs the disk class uh, uh, functions, and it supports the uh, MP uh, multi-port actions. And um, when the, when the device arrives, um, the uh, MPDEV is used to the MPDEV is you uh, uh, informs MPIU of new device arrivals. Now, class PMPs add devices called by PNP. Class PMP checks the MPIO supported device list in the registry for a matching hardware ID. Class PMP will create a PDO for this device. It's just it fills in the PDO dispatch table with one that prevents the upper layers, vault manager, and NTFS from building on top of it. This is just, okay, this only occurs for MPI, MP, MPIO devices. The PDO gets an MPI, a start device, which is the uh, last phase in plug and play device initialization. In class, uh, PMP will send an MPIO MP dev register to notify the arrival of the device instance in MPIO. So basically, there are two device stacks. There's the device stack that attaches to the pseudo device, and there's one for each path. And the device stack for each path has the uh, class driver or disk or it'll say disk uh, dot system if you use the debugger, but the uh, class driver that exists on the uh, path stack performs a different function. Now device arrival phase two, um, the uh, the device will be claimed by the uh, by the DSM. MPIO gets the uh, product data page 8083 info uh, by inquiry. MPO will call the DSM's inquired driver routine. And it, this, is, this will happen uh, for all DSMs. All DSMs get a, t get a chance to uh, claim the new device when it arrives. Uh, our, the uh, MS DSM is usually at the end of the list and can claim the device if no other uh, DSMs do. So, uh, the acquired driver routine is called by MPIO and the DSM returns success if it wants to claim the device. MPIO then calls the DSM compare devices to see if this device instance matches any others that MPIO knows about. If no match is found, a new sudo run PDO is created. If there is a match, this path is added to the sudo run. Okay, so um, if this is a if this is a new path, the pseudo LUN will be um, the 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 pseudo LUN will be created and the path will be added. If this is an existing uh, if there is an existing pseudo LUN, this uh, this new path will be added to the lit, the existing path list in the pseudo LUN in the device info array we talked about previously. 
MPO calls a set device info, a DSM's path verify, and then path at, is path ask for functions to make sure that the instance is good and active. Okay, now let's talk about some I.O. handling, uh, basic read and write requests. A pseudo LUN gets the SCSI read, write, or verify request gets sent to the pseudo LUN. MPIO will call the DSM's LB get path. And the DSM returns the path it wants request to, set, to, to be sent down. The LB get path will return the path based on a load balancing policy. MPIO will give the DSM a chance to set its completion routine by calling the set completion routine callback that was passed back when the DSM was registered. Both the LB get path and set completion routine are both registered to MPIO during the registration of the DSM. MPIO will send the request to the appropriate port PDO, which is the real one um, in their, uh, on the path that was chosen by the DSM. When the request is completed, MPIO's completion routine gets called, and the DSM completion routine will get called if set. And MPIO completes the request, and it goes back up to the upper layers. <clears throat> now, IO handling and IO octals. A pseudo LUN gets the IO octal request. MPIO calls the DSM categorized requests routine and DS return uh, DSM path set along with the path it wants the IO octal to be sent down. MPIO gives the DSM a chance to set a completion routine by calling set completion as it does with read write requests. MPIO sends a request to the appropriate real LUN PDO. Now, in the case of um, um, uh, reservation request, the reservation type requests are usually sent to a worker thread. Okay, uh, it will not be sent on the um, on the issuing on the issuing thread. They'll be dispatched to a special worker thread uh, that's created by MPIO. Also, this worker thread is used to dispatch requests that have been uh, reissued during a failover, which we'll see a little bit later. When the request is completed, MPIO's completion routine gets called. MPIO's completion routine then calls the DSM's completion routine. Request goes back to the upper layers. Now the DS IO octal DSM handling. This again, the pseudo lung gets the IO octal. MPIO calls the DSM categorized request and returns DSM will handle a DSM broadcast. MPIO calls the SRB device control uh, in the in the DSM and it's either sent synchronously or asynchronously depending on the type of request. DSM handles the request and returns the status of the request to MPIO. MPIO completes the request back to the upper layers. Now this in this case the DSM is going to handle the the IO octal versus the um, uh, versus MPIO. Now, for error handling and retries, talk about that. An I.O. IO error is detected in the pseudo LUN's completion routine. MPIO calls the DSM interpret error function, which the DSM indicates that the request should be retried. Now, when the request, now, when the interpret error routine is called, um, the, if the request is retried, MPIO will retry the request based on the retry interval. So, by default, it's one second. So, if a request comes back as retry, the, uh, the request the, the, will, uh, will pen the request for one second uh, by default and then issue the request. Also, there's a retry count. We could default to three. Uh, MPIO will try to retry count three times. And also, the DSM can uh, say that uh, retry this request and ignore the retry count. This could happen in some Alua configurations, depending on the error. If a path is in transition, um, going from uh, standby to active, or uh, there's certain there are certain um, situations where we will not um, decrement the retry count because the uh, the uh, path is in transition, uh, as indicated by the storage, uh, and the, it depends what comes back in the check condition in the uh, sense codes. 
If you have rebuilds request and submit it to the pseudo LUN PDO, IO handling will occur normal with the exception that DSM's complete routine will not be called since it was already called in the first request attempt. Now, this is uh, error handling in the event that we fail over. An error occurs prompting MPIO to call the interpret error. Now, the DSM will, will evaluate the error, as it does in all cases, and return DSM fatal error if, if, a, uh, if a path needs to be failed over. MPO confirms the path failure by calling the path verify, request, uh, path verify for each device instance on the path. A work item is queued to do the failover. New and pending requests are queued uh, for the effective pseudo run. And there's two queues. There's the, as you can see below, there's the dispatch queue and the resubmit queue. The resubmit queue resubmits requests that were already issued that have failed. The dispatch queue holds new requests. And when the, uh, when the failover is completed, these queues are cleared out and, uh, and all the requests are reissued. Next, the work item calls the DSM invalidate path to invalidate the path. Now, also, the MPIO has to make a determination if this is a unit failure or a path failure. In the case of a unit failure, uh, the, this may be fatal and the uh, pseudo LUN may be removed. It depends on uh, if all paths fail. If all paths fail, get removed. There is a chance, depending on the error, that the pseudo LUN will be removed. But MPIO will try, uh, there is, uh, will, there is a, uh, a path verify, not path ver it'll be a, um, a function that uh, MPI will call periodically to try to restore the paths. If, if all paths disappear and MPIO cannot do this, there is a chance that the pseudo LUN will be removed. Now, did, when the invalidate path is called in a DSM, the DSM will return a path to the path, the new path to use. The DSM's path verify function is called, and this path active will call to check to make sure verify that the path is good and usable. The new path is set for the affected pseudo runs. The DSM remove path is called for the paid path. So the DSM is informed on the on the on the transitioning of the of the uh, failed path and uh, the new path. Any queued request and sent down the new path. So the dispatch queue and the resubmit queue are cleared. Now that concludes the uh, the uh, series on MPIO. I hope uh, you found this informative, and um, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you. And again, this is Bob Golding, um, and I'm a senior escalation engineer at Microsoft. Uh, at the Charlotte, Charlotte office, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation.